Gold is valuable because it is relatively rare. Like gold, the value of money is determined by how much money is in circulation. One would think the power to regulate the money supply that controls our economy and affects our lives in every way would be in the hands of the government of the people. But surprisingly, it is not. The power to control the money supply is in the hands of the Federal Reserve Bank. It is important to note the Federal Reserve is not a government organization. It is a private banking cartel. The Federal Reserve System is a banking cartel. Uh, it's no different than a banana cartel or an oil cartel or the sugar cartel. It just happens to be a banking cartel. Congress, in essence, has ceded total control of the value of our money to a secretive uh, central bank. It's a group of very large and powerful private banking interests. Congress knows nothing of the conversations, the plans, and the action taken in concert with other central banks. The government has given it a monopoly, a virtual monopoly, to create the nation's money supply. But all these actions uh, directed by the Federal Reserve alter the purchasing power of our money. This has significant consequences on our economy and our political stability. Wages never keep up with profits on Wall Street and the banks, thus sowing the seeds of class and discontent. It is bewildering to think that we allow an unelected and unregulated group of private bankers to wield such incredible influence over our society. The truth is that most of us will live from paycheck to paycheck in a continued state of struggle, unable to question a system of finance that keeps us on a constant treadmill. And while most of us struggle to stay ahead, billions of dollars in profits flow into the hands of private bankers at our expense. For this is how the system works. Whenever the government needs money, it requests it from the Federal Reserve. But the Fed doesn't just give the money to the government, it loans the money at interest. Every dollar the government loans from the Federal Reserve Bank has to be paid back with interest. This keeps the government, and as such the people, in a continual state of debt. All of our income taxes are paid back to the Federal Reserve to pay off the debt that the government incurs when it borrows money from the Federal Reserve Bank. This is all a matter of public record and easily verifiable should you care to look. The founding fathers of America were well aware of the perils of central banks and sought to prevent them. Several central banks were set up but then removed. But the ruthless and powerful bankers, the Rockefellers, the Morgans, the Warburgs, the Rothschilds, were determined to set up a central banking system in America at any cost. In the early 1920s, J.P. Morgan, one of the most influential bankers of his day, caused massive panic in the markets by spreading rumors that many private banks were about to go bankrupt. This caused widespread panic. Everyone started withdrawing their deposits en masse, and the banks had to call in all of their loans to try and survive. The hysteria destroyed the markets, and the banking elites, having caused the panic, used it to influence politicians and the public that a central bank would bring stability to the system. At a secret meeting in 1910 at the estate of J.P. Morgan on Jekyll Island, the bankers wrote the Federal Reserve Act. They then gave their considerable financial and political support to Woodrow Wilson on the condition he would support the bill if elected. In 1913, Woodrow Wilson signed the bill into law. He later wrote in regret. bankers made immediate moves to increase and consolidate their power. From 1921 to 1929, the banks drastically increased the money supply, making millions of loans. Then, in October 1929, having quietly exited the markets, 
they started calling in those loans, en masse. The hysteria that followed led to the Great Depression. The conspiring bankers bought up rival banks and massive corporations for pennies on the dollar. Their position of power and influence had become absolute. 